Mr. Brock, what will you do to bring transparency to the federal reserve? Well, I'm prepared. That's first. Service the state senate, and that's one of the things that, that I wrote legislation on uh, that overwhelmingly passed Senate Bill One, uh, the, uh, trans the Taxpayer Transparency Act, allowing the state of Oklahoma, the citizens of the state of Oklahoma, to see where all of our money is being spent. You know, as a state senator, I started looking at some of the agencies, and I could not find where the money was, was going. And I thought, since it's your money, and since it's my money, we should know where that goes. Of course we should audit the Fed. I will do in the U.S. Senate what I did in the State Senate. I'll protect your money. I agree with Randy. We need to audit the Fed. This has been one of my number one issues ever since my campaign started. You know, we were talking about, uh, Mr. Hubbard talked about the farm bill. And while, while the... Uh, while the Congress is wasting its time talking about the farm bill, which will save us $23 billion over the next 10 years, the Federal Reserve was undertaking a bond buying policy to the tune of $85 billion a month. You know what that does? We're doubling our money supply. What does that do to the value of your money? It halves it. Now, people can say, well, Crow, no, you're crazy there. We don't have, you know, our inflation had to double prices. Well, it hasn't doubled the prices of TVs or cars because people don't have to buy them they can afford them. But you look at things you have to buy, whether it's gasoline, whether it's hamburgers, whether it's milk, and let me tell you, it's not going to the dairy farmers. I have two kids. I know how much milk costs, and I've considered starting to let them drink liquor to be cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 
also, I'll take one step further. I also will not support uh, Senator Cornyn out of Texas for any of his positions, whether it be going for the leader or for the uh, whip as well. Neither of them are good for the Republican Party, and we've got to get rid of both of them. Okay, thank you, Mr. Wire. We're going to start with you on the third and uh, final question of the night. What can be done to ensure that the people who have been forced into Obamacare have access to the best and most advanced hospitals in the country, like the National Jewish Hospital, the Mayo Clinic, and the Indian Anderson, etc.? Stick Congress on Obamacare. It'll go out. You don't have the option to go out there, do what you want. You're going to have to see the doctors you want to be in see. You're going to be able to go across the state lines. You're going to get the insurance policy if you want to get. Right now, you can't do that. You're limited to two in the state of Oklahoma. You're limited to two in Texas, wherever you happen to live at. We're not, we're not going anywhere. You're not going to be able to get the best care. Right now, Obamacare is putting those kind of places out of business. We're losing more jobs, and it's destroying us. The easiest way, get rid of it. Put Congress on that plan, and it'll be gone. Mr. Brown. You know, this is a, a very serious situation for Oklahoma and really all of America. Obamacare is blatantly unconstitutional. We all know that. Uh, Obama knows it. Uh, the rest of the Congress knows it. Yet there is very little backbone in the state Senate to do anything about it. Uh, I was a Senate author here in the state of Oklahoma that wrote legislation to opt out of the Obamacare mandate that many of you voted on. Uh, probably, I think it probably passed 75 or 80 percent in the state. Have you noticed, though, that the Republicans have quit fighting, especially in the Senate, have quit fighting on this issue? Now they talk about, well, there's only been 8 million people sign up for Obamacare. My gosh, that's 8 million people that have been forced to do something unconstitutional. We must repeal Obamacare. Not repeal and replace, but repeal it. Do just like we did in Oklahoma. And by the way, we need some state leaders in this state to take care of us in this state. The bill is on the books. Mr. President. The first question is, as they said, we need to get rid of Obamacare. But there was a second part of that question. Can you read that whole question over there? was another part I wanted to answer, if you could. Can you read that whole question? Yes, so I'm answering the Obamacare part, but there's another part I want to answer. Go ahead and read that whole question. What can be done to ensure that people who have been forced into Obamacare have access to the best and most advanced hospitals? Okay, the second part is to make sure that we have where we have access to the most advanced hospitals. This is the problem. It's not good enough for the Republicans to say get rid of a bomb here. That we all feel. But you know, there really are problems in our healthcare system. And I'll tell you one problem that nobody addresses. Rural medicine. I live in Chickasha, Oklahoma. I've gone through five doctors in four years. You can't keep them out of rural America. And Chickasha is the county seat. My mother lives in a different state. She has to drive two counties away to go to a doctor. That's not right. This isn't a third world country. We need to look after rural medicine. So when Obama says we need to fix the health care system, he doesn't even know what's wrong with the health care system. I do because I go to the doctor. <laughs> <laughs> uh, got two minutes to <laughs> We have a Department of Justice that every chance they get, they want to enforce the laws that can help that particular part. We have, a, we have a Pentagon that wants to go out there, cut 213,000 Army jobs, seven a out of Tinker Air Force Base, and half of our rocket infantry, uh, rocket capabilities out of our Navy. That's all within the last two months. And where is our city? Where is our congressman? They're not standing up for our people. <laughs> right now, with what's going on in Russia, Ukraine, and all those other countries, that's really the time that we want to be making those kind of decisions. I agree that our military is tired. I agree that our military is worn down. But I also do not think that that is the way that we need to be treating our military. Nope. I served for 15 years. And all I can tell you is because I actually know what it's like to be served, or to be served instead of being served what we have, like what we have in Washington right now. Too many of our current politicians that want to care about the lobbyists, the special interest troops, but they don't care about the people of Oklahoma. We are the reddest, most conservative state in America. Isn't it time that we start sending those conservative people to Washington? Two years ago, 
center in on the conservatives index rate at 69%. They also voted for the National Defense Authorization Act. In that also included the ability to get detain Americans for a definite period of time. Congressman uh, Bridenstine wasn't in office at the time, but he did speak out about that at that same time. And as a member of the military, that is not what we fought for. The same thing that he said is the same thing I'm saying now. That is not what we want to see for our people. It's time that we make a change. Again, my name is Eric White. Please remember to vote for me on June 24th. Mr. President. In our campaign, I would say there are three conservatives. Randy Brogdon is a real conservative, not some him. That's where I'm He's a consistent conservative, too. I'll give you that. I believe Eric McCray, who's not here tonight, he's a conservative. I met him, he's a great young man. He is a conservative. I'm a conservative. This is why I would say to vote for me. It's not because I'm more conservative than they are. Okay, the other two are just as conservative as me. I think the advantage I have is this. You know, Sun Tzu always said, you know your opposition, know yourself. I know the opposition. And I know the opposition better than any of my competitors. First of all, I've been a college professor for, well, I've taught that at the university level for two decades now. I have several of my former students back there. They can tell you I'm consistently conservative. I'm consistently outnumbered. I can argue our position in Washington very well. Now, if this were about the governor's race, this guy's the best governor you can find. I wouldn't be a great governor, but I would be a great senator because I know how to argue in Washington. That's number one. Number two, number two. How much time do I have? 52 seconds? Okay, I can do that quickly. <laughs> um, Number two, part of the job, of course, of the Senate is we have a lot to do with when we deal with foreign affairs, okay? For the last 20 years, I've either, I've either gone to school with, worked with people who are, who are currently members of foreign governments, or high placed in their militaries, or way up in their financial service uh, uh, organizations. Now, which countries am I talking about? Countries we're going to have to deal with. Pakistan, Iran, Egypt, Turkey, Russia, Finland. That's a few. I know what they value and I know what they think. Most importantly, I know when you can talk to them and when talking does no good. That's something I bring to the table. Mr. Brown, you have two minutes to address the Thank you very much. Thank you uh, for uh, being here tonight. I see a lot of familiar faces and it's always encouraging to see People are staying in this fight. And my, I believe that we are truly in a fight for our country and for our state. <laughs> and I'm running for the United States Senate because I believe that the greatest threat to our liberty and our economic prosperity is coming from Washington, D.C. As a dad, as a husband, I am desperately concerned about my kids' future. And I want to stop the threat. Folks, the status quo cannot continue. It's got us to where we are today. If everything was going great, we would not be having this discussion. But things aren't going so great, are they? We have a federal government that's just too big. It spends too much. It taxes too much. It regulates too much. And it snoops on us too much. And I'm not asking you to send me to Washington, D.C. so I can have a title. I'm not going there to try and manage the mess. I'm going there to dismantle it. I want to tell you something. I am well prepared for this moment in Oklahoma history. I'm willing to serve you. And I'm ready to fight for your liberty. And we are going to fight for the future of our country, for the future of this state. And I believe that if we would resolve each of us to join the fight together. Fight to stop the debt on our kids' future. Stop it tonight. Resolve ourselves to be engaged. And like Voltaire said, if we choose not to exercise our liberty, those wishing to tyrannize will do so. And don't put shackles and sleep in sleep. <coughs> we have been asleep far too long. I challenge you tonight. Wake up with me. Be resolved to get in this fight with me. RandyBrogdon.com. I need your support. For your <laughs> Randy Brogdon. Brogdon.